I wanted to welcome you and thank you for joining us tonight. Um, the series that we are working on this year, uh, all virtual, is called Who is My Neighbor? And of course, over the years as an interfaith community, we've talked about our who is our community. And this year, we're, we're trying to open up our, our vision of um, who has included that in Glay and that, and maybe reaching out to some people that we may not have been in touch with or known about. So that's what gets us to our program tonight. Um, I just want to say that, as always, we really appreciate your support and involvement, and we're looking forward to getting back together in person. But meanwhile, uh, I'd encourage you to check our website. We recently revamped it. It's venisinterfaith.org, and it has all, it's easy to get at, and easy to find all of our past programs. Um, you can see what we're going to be doing in the future, and it's also an opportunity for you to renew your membership or make a donation. And if anybody here tonight is not already a member, we, we certainly invite you to join us. And so I'm going to invite Vicki to introduce our speaker. And then uh, Vicki is a, a, a new, new member to our board. We're very happy to have her join us. She's going to tell you more about our program tonight. So Vicki Brastrom, thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Our speaker for this evening is Luz Corcuera. She's the executive director of Unidos Now, a Sarasota-based nonprofit organization committed to empowering Latinx people to achieve the American dream through education, integration, and civic engagement. A Unidos Now scholar, Lucero, will also be presenting. Luz was born in Peru and emigrated to Canada where she was a psychotherapist for 16 years. She moved to Florida 21 years ago. Luz has a proven track record in community building and community engagement. She previously served as program director for Healthy Start Manatee and a community health, as community health director for Florida Department of Health in Manatee. Luz is passionate about education, health, and cultural competency. Her significant work includes developing and overseeing diverse community-based initiatives to empower underserved and at promise communities. Luz has been recognized with numerous awards for building strong relationships with private, public, faith-based, and civic organizations, for closing the education gap, for reversing negative health trends, and for empowering people to civic engagement. I encourage audience members to put any questions for Luz into the chat feature, and she will address them at the end of the program. Thank you, Luz, for representing the Latinx community in VICA's series of programs for 2021 on the theme of Who is My Neighbor? Well, thank you so much, Vicky, for the kind introduction, and thank you all of you for inviting us this evening. It's a real honor to be able to share our story, and um, I'm so glad that Lucero Guzman, who is one of our amazing alumni, um, she, she began in our programs uh, at a very young age, more than any of her peers, and she's a living testament that everything we do at Unidos now in partnership with the community really works. So let me start by um, talking about what's Unidos now. And um, I think Lucero has some slides that she's gonna share as I speak. So Unidos now, as Vicky mentioned, is a non-for-profit organization and uh, it was, uh, founded in 2010. Our current board of directors is comprised by two of the uh, founders of Unidos now, Kelly Kishner. Uh, as you may remember, he was the youngest um, elected officer in Sarasota. He was the mayor of Sarasota. And CJ Saya, who is a local attorney, they both had a vision 
to establish an organization to empower Latinos to achieve the American dream. Um, Kathy Sherston is a board member. She's very uh, close to St. Jude Catholic Church and, and to the Diocese of Venice and very active in, in the Latinx community. Uh, Frankie Soriano was also involved from the very beginning and he's a young entrepreneur an amazing uh, contributor of Unidos Now. And Karen Arango is a local artist and she's a very talented photographer who was born in Colombia. This is a, a very engaged and active board and um, Shirley described Kelly as someone that has a boundless energy. He's very passionate about Latinos. He served on the Peace Corps in Guatemala, and that's how his passion for understanding and working with the Latino community came about. But I must say that he's also a brilliant man. Right now, um, he is the Dean of Executive and Special Programs at Ecker College. And of course, um, we are a small organization, and um, we want to make sure that our goal is to serve the community and to create opportunities for everyone. So right now, Lucere is gonna play a video that really um, illustrates who we are. Unidos Now empowers Latinos to achieve their American dream. Dreams. 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 Just knowing that someone believed in me made me want to keep pursuing my dream. Thank you, Unidos Now, for helping me achieve my dreams. We give them an opportunity to look beyond their limits. I didn't think I was a leader. I, I was felt like a normal, regular kid doing what I had to do in order to help out my family. We knew that there are so many opportunities out there for us, but we didn't know how to get them. And it was not just changed everything for us. The biggest thing that they gave me was this, this idea that I could be more than I thought I was. Elementary school students learned about college. My name is Dahlia and I go to Tuttle Elementary. When I grow up, I want to be a teacher. I want to help other students achieve their dreams. High school students learn how to get a scholarship. What I liked about the program was meeting my mentor, Alex and also getting to connect with our fellow um, scholars. I learned the importance of the college process, the importance of getting involved, networking. I cannot stress how much that they did for me. Um, if it's writing resumes, editing papers, um, all kinds of things that I needed to get to this step. And parents learn English and how to navigate the school system in the United States. Right? Maybe. Yes, yes, yes. That only make this region that much stronger as they come back as educated adults and thoughtfully engage in the conversations that make this community so great and will only make it better. Our impact will be greater when you also become the one. Be the one to help kids like my daughter to achieve their dreams. She's our future. Be the one. 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 So um, this video really illustrates what we are all about. And our mission is to empower Latinos to achieve the American dream through education, integration, and civic engagement. Over the years, Unidos Now as a small non-for-profit organization has gone through some stages of change. And uh, at the beginning, there was a lot of focus on advocacy and then um, it evolved into uh, using education as the main tool to um, change the lives of um, all the generations to come, not only with the students that we have right now, but their siblings and their relatives and other people. So our dream team is comprised by um, so many amazing people. I say that we hire based on values and passion more than expertise because some of the tools can be taught. Hector Tejeda um, is one example of what Unidos Now is all about. 
he um, came to the United States when he was a baby with his 16 year old mother uh, from Guatemala and he's an immigrant. And because someone believed in him, he was able to get through college and eventually get a master's degree from Harvard University, work for um, the pharmaceutical companies and live in different countries and retire in Sarasota. And he came to join uh, Unidos now and now he works as a volunteer for us. Cynthia Ellen Starr is our program director. She um, is from Argentina. She was an entrepreneur and she's very much into sustainability and caring for the environment, but she has a passion for higher education. Liz de Roscubilca is our family engagement director and she has a master's degree in education and also very passionate about empowering others to success. Um, Jerry Pippins, our education manager, um, he was a teacher at one of the local high schools. Lisa Ramirez, our director of strategic initiatives. Um, she was born in Chile and raised in, in the United States. Uh, Alexandra Gelzo, um, she actually lives in Venice and she's our coordinator of education initiatives. Uh, she just graduated from USF and she's a wonderful young woman. Uh, can relate to the, the students that we are helping. Juan Arcila was born in Colombia and he's one of our college coaches. And um, I think I'm, um, Robin Groel is uh, our education consultant and Beatriz Paniego is our communications director. So we all work as a, as a team and take so many undertakings to make sure that our next generation of leaders um, is built. And our goal is to believe in the students before they start believing in themselves and to give them all the tools that they need to succeed. So to that extent, we have established um, many different programs based on the needs of the community. Um, as you can see, the growth of the Latino popula population has been um, really, um, almost 370% in the past 10 years. And as we look at the growth in Sarasota Manatee, um, in the next two, uh, five to 10 years, uh, we, will we are already the largest minority and we will be probably in the leading into the uh, majority. So this population is our future. It's the workforce of the future but also uh, the leaders that are gonna be uh, making decisions for all of us. So it's important for us that they are all educated. But we saw that there was a gap in terms of education that we really needed to, um, to bridge. And um, in the next graphic, uh, you are gonna see that there is a significant um, achievement gap. In the combined Sarasota Manatee area, only nine, 18.8% of Latino adults over the age of 25 have attained a two-year degree or higher. This is half of the level achieved by white adults in the community. And so um, our focus um, was very much into education because we believe that if we uh, give them the tools that nobody can take away from them, they will have an opportunity to uh, achieve the other levels of integration, whether we call social or so socioeconomic integration. Um, in Unidos now, we give a lot of importance of, um, to empowerment. We wanna make sure that uh, parents who have come from different countries are able to use their voice and to advocate for themselves. And that's why we promote learning English as one of the basics in our um, success. We wanna make sure that parents take every opportunity to be able to master the language so that they can help their children um, in their education. We also focus on education and attainment and we have programs now in the elementary, middle school, high school and programs for the parents because we believe that um, it will lead to the socioeconomic advancement, um, political integration, residential integration, and social integration. And our slogan is educate, elevate, integrate. And we believe that by educating people, we are elevating the quality of their lives so that they are capable of integrating themselves into the larger fabric of the community. 
we have to think about um, you, you're talking about neighbor, who is my neighbor? Basically, our entire neighborhood uh, become our partners. We cannot think of the child and the parents uh, and the community isolated. Uh, we think of them as a, as a whole and try to weave together all the services in a way that no one within our grasp will fall through the cracks. So the components of, of our two generation approach, which in the case of the uh, Latinos is more like a multi-generational approach because we tend to listen to parents, grandparents, and, and of course we do everything as a family. If you have a chance to go to a church or go to um, a store or to the doctor, you're gonna see the entire family there at some point. And so parental engagement is one of our strongest components. And when people ask, what's the recipe of your secret sauce? We always say um, parental engagement is key because parents need to understand the process that their children need to go in order to build a post-secondary path. Health and well-being are also critical. And to do that, we partner with different organizations. We don't take upon ourselves to, to do this. We link our families with services in the community. And then um, we uh, make sure that there is a post-secondary and employment pathway where students you know, early on can discover their passion and they can learn the skills, they can learn what it takes to be in a, in a different profession. And so uh, we use this approach um, in order to empower not only one student at a time, but the entire family. We um, are believe, building a sustainable impact. You know, over the past year, 10 years, we began focusing on high school students at first. And um, then instead of going broader, we really um, try to build deeper. And so we um, now have programs in the elementary school, middle school, and high school. And um, because of the pandemic, we had to switch uh, really quickly. And luckily, we were prepared to do that to a virtual format, which allow many students from areas from South Sarasota, like Osprey, Venice, North Fort, to uh, join the program because there was a virtual format that uh, was addressing the transportation uh, problem that they faced. And so um, we're gonna cover some of the programs that um, we have right now at the different levels. And um, one of the reasons why I took this job actually when I was approached by the board of directors in 2015, at the December, 2015, um, to take the leadership of Unidos now was to see the kindergarten enrollment. Uh, it's almost at 40% Latino in the combined Manatee Sarasota de Soto. And so it means that uh, Latinos are having uh, children, you know, at a faster rate and they are younger. And it is important for us to do something. And so the reason why we want to make sure that we work with all the populations. And actually, um, Lucero, um, when she graduated from our Future Leaders Academy and she went on to college, um, she came back uh, because we believe that she's a great role model and also her parents who collaborate with our programs are living examples of um, what um, this program is all about. And she has been working with elementary and middle school. So on our next slide, I'm gonna let Lucero they cover this part so she can talk about um, our flag program. Thank you so much. So as Luz mentioned, um, Unidos now initially targeted mostly high school students and that's how I actually knew them. I came to Unidos now because I am a first generation student. Um, I was not born in the US. My parents were either None of my family was, so we really didn't know anything about how to navigate the system here, what opportunities are available. Um, the college application process in a lot of our home countries is very, very different than it is here, to the point where if you don't know at an early age, you will probably be lost if no one tells you about it. And 
Um, the thing about Unidos Nava is that they really know how to work with students in my case. Um, a lot of public schools aren't, they, they don't expect students like myself to, um, they, they don't know the struggles that we go through and they don't know how to talk to us. Um, I know I had that experience myself. I was given information that didn't apply to me because of my situation. And Unidos Nava really knew what to do with me. They knew, they saw my potential. Luz mentioned earlier that they believe in students before students believe in themselves. And I think that was really the case for me. Um, Unidos now really saw something in me before I saw it, before I realized um, that I had more potential than I thought in the beginning. Um, and it, a lot of it has to do with recognizing the strengths that come in our differences, as cheesy as that may be. Um, a lot of us don't grow up hearing that being from a different country doesn't have to be a bad thing. It doesn't have to be a limitation. Um, so because of that reason, I came to Unidos now and I stayed. So now I am in college. I'm in my last semester, actually. And I have been working with a new -er program for elementary school girls and for middle schoolers. So this slide that you can see here, there's a lot of quotes on there um, and a picture. This is our FLAG program. FLAG stands for Future Leaders Academy for Elementary School Girls. And this is a program that came about because of a lot of um, feedback, I suppose, from high school students. And I know that I was in the same position as well, that I really wish I would have learned everything I learned in Unidos Now a little bit earlier. I wish that I would have known these terms. I wish I would have been exposed to different careers because um, I was talking to someone recently who is currently in the program and she said that she is so grateful for everything that she's received at Unidos Now. Um, but she's, she's having to do everything so quickly. She's learning as she's doing. And she was actually helping with the elementary school program. And she was saying how she's so glad to be able to give back to these students because they can learn and plan. And they don't have to do everything as quickly as she's having to do it as a senior in high school right now. So this program helps students to find their voice um, to gain confidence, and of course, to learn about the college application process, which might sound a little bit crazy because they're just in, these students are third to fifth grade, but it's just getting them exposed to different concepts. And the main purpose is for them to know that they have the potential, that they can go to college. It's something that is in their future um, and exposing them to different careers. They're exposed to so many careers that I wasn't exposed to until I started helping them. For example, robotics, um, a lot of coding, they've done so much coding, a lot of things with theater, um, a lot of different careers that is just good for them to know what they like, what they don't like, explore everything. So that's one of the main themes for them to explore everything. So in this picture, um, of course, this was quite a while back when we were meeting in person. This is a closing ceremony. So we like to acknowledge the hard work that our students put in throughout the school year. And in this picture, the students were giving their personal statements. This is after a whole year of growth, uh, confidence building, and they feel confident enough to give us a few sent sentences about what they want for their future. So here you can see some quotes. I aspire to become an engineer in technology. Second one is I would like to solve the problem of ocean pollution. And what I noticed is that a lot of the careers that these students were saying that they wanted to go into were careers that they were exposed to throughout the year. Different field trips we took, um, different workshops we had, they learned about these careers, they saw something they liked, and now that's what they're focusing on. Doesn't mean that they'll stay in this forever, but it's good for them to have an idea, to have something to explore. Oops. Okay, this slide is also from pre-pandemic days, and this was actually a summer camp that our students had the opportunity to be a part of. So again, this is elementary school girls. Um, third to fifth grade. And the reason for having this program for girls is because in the Latino community, sometimes girls aren't as encouraged as their male counterparts to explore, um, to dream big. And we really wanted to undo some of this thinking to let our girls know that they can dream big. College is for them. They can go into all these different STEM fields and also to educate the parents about these fields that they are, their, their daughters are just as capable as anyone else to go into these fields. So after um, a few weeks of a summer camp, you can see some of the quotes that our students had here. They learned a lot in the bottom picture. They were working with some college students to pick up microplastics 
um, and they looked at things under the microscope. They went back to a lab and they were able to use microscopes to see what the things, the trash that they picked up was. In the top picture, they were coding robots. And here they were working as a team to figure out what was wrong with a pair's robot. Someone's robot wasn't working right. So the whole group was figuring out what they coded wrong. All right. And in a few slides, I will talk about what workshops are looking like now. Things are a bit different, we're online, but I think this has been a good thing for some students because it's, it allows them to participate um, even if they're far away. A lot of our students have siblings, younger, older, so their parents are always um, busy dropping students off, picking students up, and it's hard for them to find the transportation with all their siblings sometimes. Um, but now I'll move on to the middle school program. The middle school program came just a bit after the elementary school program, and this program is open to girls and boys. Um, so here are some pictures of workshops they've had. Um, as you can see, some of these are in person and some of them are moving to online. The elementary school and the, el in the middle school program have very similar goals and similar workshops, um, but they're given separately because there's an age difference and the workshops are age appropriate. The elementary school workshop is, or the elementary school program especially focuses on STEM careers. And the main reason is just to empower girls to start thinking about these careers, getting them exposed to them at a younger age, but all the middle school students also um, are exposed to that. All right, so I wanted to include this slide because I wanted um, you all to see what online workshops are looking like now. They've changed a lot, a lot, a lot, but I think we have adapted well and students are really engaged still. We found ways to have students participate um, and for them to still learn valuable information while being in an online setting. So in the top left, maybe you can see that's in the top left is um, a workshop where students learned about um, technical schools and community colleges. So this was really valuable for them to see the difference between that and four-year universities. In the top right, they were learning about different career clusters and what kind of person usually goes into those career clusters. That way they could see what traits do I have, what is interesting to me, and maybe I can see one of these areas. Um, just recently in the bottom, our students had a workshop with the, you know, the chemical engineering department at the University of Florida. And this was really exciting for them because they were able to talk to college students. The workshop was led by college students and they did a hands-on activity. Um, so here they were talking about engineering, what is an engineer? And a lot of, a lot of our students uh, were really excited about this because they have already looked at other engineering areas in our program. And this was just a new one that they were learning about. And on the bottom right, is a workshop that our students had with Moat Marine. They were building a benthic lander, which is just like a, a machine that is put underwater that collects data and it helps scientists figure out what's going on at the bottom of the ocean. So they were using physics and math um, and also just problem solving skills to find a mechanism that was able to sink, didn't touch the walls. They had all sorts of parameters they had to work around, but they had a lot of fun doing it. Um, and there's a lot of workshops like these. They've had workshops with theater, doing improv, playwriting, just exposing them to different things while also being hands-on. This is for elementary and middle school. And since uh, you all have look, been looking at who is my neighbor, this is something that is also incorporated within the program, mentoring, role models, and giving back. Students within the program especially like high school students that have been through the program or currently in the high school program, really see the value of what they've been taught and want to give back. I know that was the case for me, which is why I'm so passionate about the work that I'm able to do with the elementary and middle school students. So each of these pictures here are different high school students that are mentoring our younger students from our elementary and middle school program. So there's three ways that students do this. Number one, Part of the elementary and middle school program includes clubs that students can join. There are different areas and they join them based on their interests. So if they like reading and grammar, or if they just want some more help, they join that. They have a math club, science club, health and wellness, and high school students lead these clubs. They meet with the students and they prepare hands-on activities. Another way is through tutoring. 
So during the end of the year, we noticed that some of our students are struggling a little bit more. Maybe the motivation is not as high. So we like to pair our students with tutors that can help them with homework specifically. And that's what you can see on the bottom right. Another thing that students do, it was the first time we did it last spring. Um, we did interview with the college expert, which was a huge hit with our elementary school and high school students and middle school. Basically, our younger students were able to interview a, an incoming college freshman about their experience going through the application process and finding out what it's like being a first generation college student, um, what their plans are, and it really helps bring the two programs or the three programs together. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lucero. Um, as you can see how um, Lucero is passionate and excited about empowering these younger generations, and she does a wonderful job at doing this. And so our Future Leaders Academy um, is a program that was initially created with the goal of helping students get into college. But over the years, we realized that the students have so many different options. And we um, established the Future Leaders Academy with two different tracks. One of the things that I want to say before I move forward with this, as Lucero was talking, I thought about how we do not ask the kids the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? We ask them, what kind of problem do you want to solve in the world? And actually the answers are mind blowing because the little girls, uh, for instance, they said, I want to solve poverty. I want to solve racism and discrimination. And then we ask, and what kind of skills do you need to do that? And then we try to match this with different careers. But it's amazing that third, fourth grade elementary school girls already have that kind of thinking and the middle schoolers as well. And so um, in our Future Leaders Academy, we, it's a year round program and we provide them with all the tools that they need to be able to choose a post-secondary path, whether it translates into a two year or four year college degree or a high quality certification. The students are uh, receiving workshops that where they will learn how to build a resume, how to write an essay. Um, they also receive uh, ACT and SAT preparation. They um, participate in uh, career exploration panels with different professionals that speak about their careers, but also that they have the opportunity to become mentors. We um, also have the students um, attending our high school clubs where they have an opportunity to give back to the community. Once they've gone through our Future Leaders Academy program, they become officers in the high schools and they can uh, help their peers. Um, the students also have individual mentoring we pair them up with mentors from the community. Mentors are usually people that have expertise in a field uh, or they just have the desire to, uh, to accompany them in their journey. And the mentors become the type of person that will support their um, efforts. Like saying, do you remember that you have to submit your essay? Have you requested your letter of recommendation from your teacher? Do you remember the deadline to apply for scholarships. We also put a lot of emphasis on the financial aid. We talk about scholarships and we help the students apply for different scholarships and uh, also um, help them um, connect with the different colleges that they are thinking about applying just to see the financial packages that are offered. And many times um, some of the students have challenges. Um, I'm gonna refer in this case to the undocumented students or the DACA or dreamers that we know that they have all the opportunities if they were to apply for a merit scholarship without looking at their uh, documentation status, they would probably get all the scholarships in the world. However, they are limited in their choices because of that piece of paper. But in general, our students have been very successful and the colleges that we have established a relationship with have been very generous. They love our students. They want our students because they know that beyond being talented, they are hardworking, 
They have high standards for themselves. Most of them uh, sometimes uh, are, have to step up and help their families financially. So we know students who work 40 hours a week, while they have a heavy academic load in school, they still do community service. They are in our program that it's very rigorous, very demanding. And then um, they go on to college. And that just um, our last cohort, uh, we had students who were accepted into very selective colleges like Cornell, um, Vassar College, Columbia University, uh, Georgia Tech, UF, and with significant scholarships. Um, that group earned $2.8 million in scholarships and grants. And so um, we know that when we give them the support and the confidence that they need, and they are able to use the tools that we provide all year round, they can uh, achieve their goals. And there, we have students who prefer to stay around and so they go to community colleges, which I think it's a wise investment. Some of them um, do the dual enrollment while they are in high school and they take advanced classes and get the credits for college. And some of them decide to stay for two years here and then they can transfer to any Florida university. Uh, and they also receive financial aid uh, packages. Part of our um, Future Leaders Academy to um, focuses on all the community partnerships that we have. We have partnerships with uh, the local colleges, with the business community, with the faith-based community, and all the local foundations. Um, we believe that the only way we can be successful is if we think just like the concept of our um, two-generation approach. We are one community. If we think that these kids are our kids, no matter where they come from, no matter what they do, and it's our responsibility, we are most likely going to be successful in helping them achieve their dreams. And uh, our motto in Unidos now is dream big. We ask them, we encourage them, and we nurture that dream big concept because they are capable of achieving their dreams. Um, Lucero, do you wanna move on to the next slide? Um, so that's one a workshop that when we are in person, we are able to have at USF in the auditorium. Here we have representatives from the Community Foundation of Sarasota County, the Manatee Community Foundation, um, the Financial Aid Office, uh, USF, and someone from the uh, Selby Foundation talking about to parents and students about the different scholarships that they can apply for. Um, we um, also, I mentioned the high school clubs are really key because the students uh, get a taste of what being a leader is all about. Our program is not only about college preparation or building a post-secondary path. It's about leadership skills and also giving back to the community. Community service, leadership skills go hand in hand. So the high school clubs are very important. When we are able to have activities in person, we take the students and their parents on college tours. And some of the siblings, the younger siblings tag along. And we give them an idea of what a private college is all about, what a public college is all about, what a small college is, and what a large college is. And so we try to go to different colleges. And the students get to meet um, professors or students in their senior years that are really relevant. First generation, low income, Latino students who are now on a path to achieve their dreams. We also um, emphasize parental engagement. It is so important for us to have the parents committed and learning about what the kids can choose to do so that they can support their choices. You can see uh, Lucero with her mom, Maria, in one of the pictures. And you look so young, Lucero. I don't know how old were you, 15 years old? <laughs> and um, you know other families. And it's really touching when parents that are going on college tours or learning more about the um, college application process, they realize that they also want to do something for themselves. We have parents that are, you know, not even 40 years old and they say, I am going to go back to college or I want to change my career. I want to do something. And so the dreams that they have for their children 
also foster dreams for themselves. And um, as I mentioned, the mentors play a very important role because they are the ones who stay with our students. And now that we are expanding our mentorship program uh, beyond high school, some mentors and students have the choice to stay together since they know each other very well. Uh, once the student goes to college, the mentor continues to, to be mentoring with them. And um, also we have a system of peer bodies to support them. Then um, we have, uh, this is a, a workshop that we had and it was hosted at the Community Foundation of Sarasota County. And it was about the basics of what is college application, what kind of um, tools we have. And it was for mentors, parents and students together. Um, I think um, it's difficult not to have these in-person meetings, but we were very fortunate that prior to the pandemic, the Selby Foundation had given us a grant. So we upgraded our um, software and our technology. So when the pandemic hit last year in March, around this time, we were able to switch everything to online programs. We didn't stop for one second providing uh, all the uh, workshops and everything, we just switched to a virtual format. Somebody asked me in the chat room, will you continue with this? Probably it, we know we will have a hybrid model that allows people to be in person uh, with observing all the safety guidelines, but also continue offering the online for those students that due to transportation barriers may not be able to join in person. Um, the students who are interested in, in pursuing a two-year degree or high quality certification, uh, we also take them on a tour and they have a hands-on experience here at the State College of Florida, Manatee Technical College. And they have an opportunity to talk to um, teachers, to assist classes, to attend classes, and also to um, play around with different careers that are available. You can see in some of the pictures, the students, you know, are studying um, anatomy and also exploring careers and talking about radio engineering and being able to have hands-on on the labs, which really um, helps them to decide on what kind of profession they wanna choose or what kind of uh, career they wanna pursue. Um, as I mentioned, we try to find a panel with experts for career exploration days. And usually we find um, professionals that reflect the type of careers that our students are interested in pursuing. Uh, these are all Latino uh, professionals who are now very successful and they give their time participating in a career panel. And we have several throughout the year. So there is always an opportunity for the students to explore different careers. And the interests vary, you know, some years we have students, all of them want to be in the medical field or the majority, others want to be in the sciences, you know, others want to be in the arts and music or uh, law. And so it, it changes our business. And this year we have a lot of students interested in architecture and the environment. So we, we found uh, professionals that reflect those careers. Along with it, um, we establish a college completion program, which is to support our students during um, their college uh, years so that they can achieve um, graduation on time with a minimal or no debt. And we have created a support network through our peer body system to assist uh, students who are at different colleges so that they can continue um, some sort of um, uh, Unidos High School club. Um, and then the mentors, if they don't continue with their mentors, we find other mentors for them in the college or the city where they are attending. And we continue to establish relationships with the business community to find internship opportunities for the students. And I think this is a very important program because it means that we follow through with the student and until they are graduated and they have uh, an opportunity uh, to be established in the career of their choice, but also to give back because they come back and work in our programs and mentor our younger students. 
Um, I'd like to add a bit to this slide um, because since I'm currently in college, this is something that applies to me, not only because I'm part of the program, but because I help to manage a section of it. So as was mentioned, there's a peer buddy system that is part of the college completion program. So about a year ago now, um, the person that was coordinating this reached out to the students that were currently in college that had finished the high school program and had been accepted to college were studying. And they asked if we would be interested in participating in a mentoring program, a peer buddy program, where we would be matched with a current high school student that is in the program right now, going to college maybe in a year or two. And I was really excited to do this. And the person that I was paired with, um, I feel was a great match. She's currently at the high school that I went to in the same program that I was in. And she was interested in a lot of the same clubs that I was part of. So I think this was a really good experience for both of us because I was able to give her some advice on high school um, on her last years in high school, maybe what classes she should consider, what extracurricular she should consider, even teachers. We had some of the same teachers that I had um, a couple years back when I was in high school. I told her um, what they're like, what to expect, what classes are like, what the program she was in was like. And she is actually graduating high school um, this coming summer, spring, and she has been accepted to Emory, which is really exciting, along with UF and a few other schools. Um, she's currently deciding where she wants to go, but it's just really exciting to see this progression um, because I wish I would have had someone who was just a little bit older, who was in college and could have told me what life was like. Um, and I know we have similar backgrounds as well. So um, I think she's able to relate to me and it's a really nice experience, I think, for both of us. Another thing is after students get accepted into college, there sometimes are expenses that aren't um, things that we think are coming. For example, books can be expensive with a lot of online classes. They make us pay for homework and it's pretty expensive. Sometimes they're about $100 to pay for an access code to take to do homework. And without that, you don't pass the class. So because of this reason, there was someone that reached out to Unidos Now and wanted to help the Latino community. He asked, what is a way that I can invest in um, the students that are in college currently? So there's actually a fund set up for students that have gone through the Unidos Now program and are currently in college. And these students can apply to the program and they're able to um, request funds for non-tuition related expenses. So it doesn't help with housing or with the actual tuition, but if there's books a student needs, um, if students live really far from home and they would like to take a flight home, if there's a spring break volunteering activity that requires a fee, if there's clubs that require a fee, just anything that will help um, these first generation college students complete their studies uh, to the fullest potential and take advantage of opportunities that are presented. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lucero. Um, as you were speaking, I was getting uh, messages from people who are watching ABC7 News. One of our scholars, Oscar Portillo, is a guest and he's talking about the immigration bill and what the House just passed uh, with the majority of people, a path to citizenship for the dreamers. So now it goes on to the Senate. So it's really encouraging to see um, people like Lucero who mentors a young woman who is now having a chance to go to Emory University and with a very significant scholarship um, that it's only um, for selected students and she's one of them. And then have one of our students talking, you know, on television about what it means to be an immigrant and why it's important to support these young people. Our parent leadership program, you know, is a program that it's very dear to my heart. It's, uh, I'm really passionate about working with the parents. Um, when I joined Unidos now in 2016, and one of the things that I learned is that parents were not going um, to college tours and there was a college tour coming up. And so I met with the parents and I told them that um, it, what they would do in, in, to be able to go on a college tour just because we didn't have any funding. The parents organized themselves in a couple of months and they got uh, some funding to go on a college tour that was matched by a generous donor. 
And from there, the parents really got very involved in everything. And so right now we have a program for parents. Um, it used to be at two elementary schools, but now it's online because of the pandemic but the parents are so engaged and um, it's really touching when the parents finish the year round, how the kids come to the ceremony. And as you can see, there is a picture where, you know, the parents have received their certificate and their graduation hat and the, the students are there right with them, very proud of their parents. We um, also have this program with the intention of them building social capital, which means that they can support each other, they can learn about the community resources and so that they can integrate into the community. But most importantly, when they have problems that they bring related to their children's education or the barriers, they have the opportunity to meet with a principal of the school and present alternatives to resolve these problems. So um, it's all around for us, learning life skills and, uh, and a way of living in the United States as a productive member of the society. I uh, also want to mention that um, during the pandemic, Unidos now is not a, a, a social services agency, but because there were so many families that did not qualify for any resources, um, especially um, those that were offered to the majority of people like unemployment insurance, the CARES Act, um, they didn't qualify for any of it. And so they were calling Unidos now for help. And there were so many community agencies seeking our help. And we were able to uh, provide some assistance with the help of the community and our partners. The local foundations really did an amazing job. And it was the philanthropic community that gave us a way to um, assist these parents. You can see in those pictures, um, the parents that are going out in the community and picking up food for those who cannot drive, but also going um, to the migrant camp and distributing masks and hand sanitizers and giving information on COVID-19, um, partnering with other uh, community members to provide health screenings and help uh, families navigate through the complex system and accessing some resources, just linking them with existing resources. Um, the pandemic has a, a silver lining for us. It has really shown that there is no other way to do anything if it's not in collaboration. We are open to collaborate with everybody and anybody. And um, the families are very important to us because they perform essential jobs. These are families that work in the agriculture, families that work in the healthcare industry, in the restaurant service industry, and especially in the senior um, homes. And so it was uh, really important for us to be able to do that. It was an added uh, stress to Unidos now, to our small team and to the little resources that we had but the community really step up to the plate and the reason why we were able to be there for them. And there are so many heartwarming stories um, that have taken place because of these. And these parent ambassadors uh, continue to do that. So they also have a chance to attend um, the different community workshops and, and we try to um, to provide the community workshops based on the on the topics that they are interested uh, financial literacy housing um, saving for college job seeking and resume writing but also we had a group of attorneys who talk about housing and the rights that the tenants have and um, you know how to create a budget so we we try to address all these um, in different ways and the community workshops are open not only for uh, people uh, in Unidos now, but for anybody in the community because we live stream in Facebook um, and also the Zoom uh, recording, like just like you do for your organization. It's um, also posted on our website and uh, all over our social media. And it, I think um, we do all our programs in English and Spanish. 
And uh, if you are interested and you are on social media, follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, so I, I think this is the Lucero. Uh, this is the um, yes. end of our presentation, uh, our slides. But I think we have some questions um, that you posted on the chat. Um, Somebody says, as a high school dropout myself, I'm concerned about the difficulties dropouts encounter. Would you say Unidos now programs impact the dropout rate of Latinx students? And have you seen young people in direct danger or dropping out be brought back into Unidos now? Like with any community, um, dropping out of a school is always a risk. Uh, we work very closely with both the school districts in Sarasota and Manatee. And we want to make sure that we provide them with the right advice to use culturally and linguistically competent tools to engage the families so that the dropout um, kids not graduating on time or dropping out of school are addressed early on. But also um, the students, as Lucero was describing, they could access our mentoring program. And actually one of our um, students in, in our Future Leaders Academy, he, he took upon himself to create a non-for-profit organization that provides tutoring. And um, he has recruited his peers and other adults in the community. And so there is a tutoring program going on. If anybody has difficulties, um, we will be able to help. Not only with that, um, we also realized that many of the families didn't have the devices that they needed. And so we were able to uh, get some uh, computers that were refurbished or uh, different uh, devices for them to use and also assist with internet and phone so that they would not stop um, taking their classes because I think the pandemic has been very challenging for all of us. I do not have numbers to say that we brought back students who were dropouts um, because we um, do so many things and um, we focus on the students who are ready to put the work into it. We don't want them to fall through the cracks, of course, but uh, we focus on the students that are ready to move in, into a post-secondary path. Um, funding sources, thank you for your question. That's a very important question. Um, 70% of my job in leading the organization is to dream about grants. Uh, I write grants, I write reports, and I'm always looking at sources. Who are we gonna apply for a grant? But also every program has uh, its own funding. And I would say that 40% of our revenue comes from grants. And the other 70% um, is a combination of private donations, but also some of the um, scholarships that some of the funders have put together to assist our students. Uh, it's a lot of work because we are a small organization. We do not have all the manpower. We, don't, we do not have a marketing team or a fundraising person. So we do everything. We wear multiple hats and um, the grant writing is a big chunk of what I have to do right now. I don't know if, um, Anybody has any other questions and we'll be happy to address. How many students are you currently serving? Um, I would say that in all our programs combined, including the high school class, last year we tallied the number of students and families we serve. It was like about 1800 altogether um, wow. in both counties. And um, every program has a specific number of students. For instance, our Future Leaders Academy for high school students, we cannot have you know, hundreds of kids because then we, it, will do a, it will be a disservice to them. And so we accept um, this year we have uh, 48 students, I think, um, in our Future Leaders Academy. And with offering a virtual format, we can accommodate more. However, all of our community workshops are open to everybody. And I haven't really counted all the many students that, or people that just go into our workshops, but I can see our social media. When we post a recording of a community workshop, I see that there are over a thousand views. And so it means that we're not counting, I don't know their ages, 
but there are people who are going back and, and watching, you know, um, all the programs. And there was one that we had on how to be safe during the pandemic in college and the housing that was offered by the Florida State University and the students came to give a presentation, you know, after the recording was posted, there were over a thousand views. So um, it means that our reach is broader and it's kind of hard to track everybody who is benefiting from our program directly or indirectly. And yes, we are a 501c3 organization. So Vicky, I hope that this is what you were hoping for and um, the information has been useful for all of you. Absolutely, it was a wonderful presentation. And I'm, we're so very impressed with the work that you do. Thank you. And I wanna add my thanks. This has been eye-opening, I had no idea, so. We'll, as I, as you know, we will be posting this on our website. So hopefully we'll have a thousand views. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And thank, thank you. It was a great presentation. Thank you. It was good to see all of, all of you. And we'll be back in touch with another program. Follow our notices. <laughs> Thank you. Good Thank night. you so much. Good night. It was real, a real honor. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. you too. Thank you. Same to you. Thanks. Bye-bye. And thank you, Bye. Lucero. <laughs>